Hey guys, welcome to Coffee with Megan, where I talk to people in the fashion industry who are using their platform for good. Today I'm talking to my friend Heidi. She uses her voice on social media and on her blog, really talking about how you can live sustainably. And she has a lot to say and a lot of interesting tips about how you get your information and just how you can live a more sustainable life. So take a watch. Hey Heidi. Hey girl. Hey, so we are obviously in COVID times and all hiding out places. Tell us where you are right now and uh, where you've been hiding out. So I'm in New York. I'm in my apartment and thank God I've got my little chihuahua to keep yeah. me snuggly and warm. <laughs> but yeah, we're, um, we're holding on the fort here for right now. Yeah. And how's New York right now? How are you like, how is it outside? And it's pretty, I mean, right now it's terrible weather, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's been really weird. Um, you know, you go out on the streets and thankfully people really seem to be respecting all, all the stay at home, um, rules so it's it's really strange i i ran up to a friend's house the other day to water her plants for her because she's stuck out in california and then i rode a bike back and i was just like blown away i didn't even have to think about traffic i mean it was yeah. very strange so yeah. such a yeah. new york must be the strangest of places to be in this um yeah it's also a little bit magical though because all the flowers are blooming and everything yeah. and you go out and like walk around in them and you can like hear birds yeah and i'm like wait a second <laughs> what's going on all my years in new york this has not happened before no yeah. um well tell us a little bit about you who's heidi how did you end up in new york city um what are you up to right now what's your kind of things going on in your life okay so uh yes i'm heidi <laughs> i came to new york when i was 19 um i had started modeling when i was 13 and um weirdly what brought me to new york was not modeling it was actually acting i came up here and i went to lee strasberg's um like summer intensive method acting program which was so much work <laughs> i learned a lot though um but then i met my ex-boyfriend and he was like what are you doing this is crazy you should be modeling so um i've been with muse modeling with them ever since and um yeah i feel like new york is is i mean the moment i landed here it felt like home so it just I'm, you know doing whatever i can to make sure i can stay <laughs> well, studying at columbia right now as well well not yeah yeah, so I started at Columbia in fall of 2016. Um, I really always loved being in the classroom. It always felt like a really safe space for me, I guess. Um, so I really just kind of was like missing a little bit of an element of like one like control and structure, I think, um, with you know how crazy modeling is yeah. and you're all over the world all the time and scheduled to last minute. And so I feel like I just reached a little bit of a tipping point and needed something else. and love the classroom so I applied to Columbia and I've been studying psychology there and absolutely loving it so awesome well yeah. that brings me a bit to your blog space for anything um yeah. I've been having a look at it and you have a whole section on sustainable living which is super interesting and I really love this quote um each of our daily choices around fashion is a vote for the world we want to live in and I thought that was really beautiful and very interesting and I wanted to ask where did your passion for sustainability and within the fashion industry like when did it start was it something you've always been kind of interested in or I think I had I, I don't think I know I had zero concept of what the fashion industry is doing to the planet for all of the years that I've been in it and then there was like a couple different things that happened over the course of a few years that really got my brain like I mean I, like I felt like my brain was exploding to be honest with you I was like I can't believe this is happening <laughs> um, so the first thing um I would say I'm trying to remember the order of events I'll probably screw them up but like one of the biggest impacts that I had was um or the impact on me was uh watching the documentary The True Cost which really dives into um what the fashion industry does both like ethically to people and also sustainability and the planet and everything it kind of touches on all aspects of fashion and um andrew the director has become a friend and he's an amazing guy so like just getting more knowledge through talking to people like that and watching what they were looking into 
And then I was invited to Haiti in summer of 2014, not at all related to fashion or sustainability. We went, up, we went down there to um, teach English with a really great school called English in Mind. And my favorite thing about their trips, they do, I think we were down there for 10 days. They do these 10 day trips. And in the morning, they would take us around Port-au-Prince and we would meet with all different people that were starting different organizations with, you know, good, I don't want to say causes, but like, um, you know, companies with morals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, so we were just kind of, you know, rolling around Haiti and looking at these different companies. And I came across what at the time was called Rebuild Globally. And they basically um, were born out of the earthquake. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, my friend who was doing disaster relief down there had women coming up to her going, we don't want your help. We need work. Like we want to yeah. help ourselves. You know, so they started this company literally just grabbing tires off of the street and carving, they would sit under a tent and like carve the soles of the shoe for these shoes out of the tires and make these like really horrible, ugly shoes. <laughs> but people were buying them because they realized like how important it was. And then they were like, oh, this is like a way to create jobs and like create a sustainable income. But also, Tires are burned like crazy in Haiti. And every sand, we, we discovered that every pair of sandals we make prevents 10 kilograms of CO2 from entering the environment. Wow. So it wound up being this also like really cool yeah. sustainability thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, when I met them, they were just making one pair of sandals and they were doing a really beautiful job. But, you know, in New York, we don't really wear flip flops. Yeah. And I was like, guys, we have like a really huge opportunity here. So I worked with the artisans and we created some new designs and now they do jewelry and bags and all, all sorts of wow. things. And we actually have a really cool collection called the Essentials Collection that's made all out of tire. So if you're vegan, that's, awesome. that's the one for you. <laughs> yeah, I saw that beautiful yellow backpack you posted about on your blog. I really love it. It's so I cool. I love that. Yeah, I wanted to ask. And the name of that um, Haiti brand now is... What is so it? it's now called Dume, which is yeah. two hands in French. Um, and so that is the uh, for-profit fashion, ethical fashion brand. And then Rebuild Globally still exists as a job training and education program. That's amazing. Yeah, because I find it interesting how you collaborated with them. I didn't know if it was they came to you and that's why you went to Haiti. But that's amazing. You met them while you were out there and you just got yourself stuck in and involved with them. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny because and you and I have talked about this. I feel like a lot of models feel like we don't really have a lot to offer yeah. outside. Of like, yeah. You know. <laughs> but it was the first time I was like, I, I know something about fashion. You. Yeah. And it was really cool and empowering for me too, you know, to yeah. be able to do that. No, I think that's such an important factor because some of us are so scared to Put ourselves out there not just models everyone thinking they don't have something to give but if you're interested and you have a passion for something you should go ahead and talk about it um i wondered so you promote different brands that you like and talk about different products on your instagram um, that are sustainable what factors are important to you when you're looking at a brand like as you say with the haiti one it has like a full circle of ethical with the women and is this important to you to know a brand is fully conscious and thinking about everything they're doing yeah absolutely um i think that um i think that it's really interesting to you know i, I i'm definitely not like fully immersed in the world but i like to try yeah. to stay up to date with things and you know just like be learning about new brands all the time and the movement that I've seen, which I think has been a really good movement and one that I really believe in and have always been pushing, is that first, you have to make a really good quality product. Yeah. You cannot just sell off of being sustainable or ethical. You have to have a good product, you know? And I've really seen amazing brands like stepping up and creating incredible products that people would love to have. And so I think that that is number one. And then when it comes to ethical versus sustainable, it's really interesting. I didn't even really know the difference between the two terms for a long time. And, but I do think they really go hand in hand. And so for me, it's really just like, is this company being conscious about something? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or are they out just for themselves? Yeah. And 
they can say like whether it's using plastic from oceans or whether it's employing re refugee women like if you can sit there and tell me like this is at the forefront of our thought process like i want to support you yeah and i think honesty is super important like if people haven't quite figured out a certain aspect of it but they hope to get there and they're just super honest and clear and open and authentic about what they're doing i think that's yeah really i can agree with that more too like, and especially when you hear them say that out loud like hey our packaging is really not sustainable but we're yeah. working on it you know well um, this is I why we choose to use this right now but we're trying to figure out a better option um i love that with brands um yeah, and I wondered, like, have you seen a lot of positive change within the fashion industry? Like, is there things you can think of that have been really positive? Um, yeah. or is there a long way to go? Or uh, I mean, I, I think there's always going to be yeah. a long way to go because we always, you know, can get better. But um, even like, you know, Vogue has their sustainability edit now and you can yeah. get their newsletter and like learn about what brands are doing and things like that. So the fact that it's at the forefront of like everyone's conscience right now, um, I think is really cool because it was just not at all like no you know <laughs> and that is i know for me it's something i struggle with and this question can be a little bit tough but as a model where we're in an industry obviously that is is it has a lot of negative impact um yeah. is it something you sometimes struggle to juggle like your thoughts on sustainability and also working in the industry or is it like you just use your voice where you can um, it's a thousand percent something that is like in my brain all the time. Like, how can we, um, how can we like justify these two seemingly like, opposing sides of ourselves? Like, how do you reconcile those? Right. But, um, I think that there are very few, if any industries that are perfect. Yes. Um, and so I think like, unless you want to, you know, give up your entire life and go like, be yeah. a monk, you know, which is always an option, but yeah. like you, you have to, you have to just constantly like balance and, and weigh and, and, you know, it's, it's so true that modeling does give us a huge platform and, um, and, and a, not even just a huge platform because not everybody has a huge following, but like you have a unique perspective that I think people, um, can, can, will enjoy listening to in addition to all the other perspectives, you know, so um yeah it's constantly a weird yeah but as you say it gives us a perspective it gives us an indecided inside a look and we get to meet many amazing people i think who are who you can talk about like new ideas and new changes and connect and i think that's awesome i mean yeah it's it's a tough can be tough in your head sometimes trying to figure yeah. out but it's also like i think about um and, and this is not something that everybody needs to do, but it's one of the ways that I like to use, use my career is like all these brands need models. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of them are small. And so I think about like, I've done like pro bono work, like yeah. in the same way that a lawyer would do for brands that I believe in that maybe can't afford to hire somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. And then you can bring some promotions to them with some of the other brands. They weigh off like maybe these other brands you've worked where you've been paid can help give you more of a, a voice and promote a smaller brand. You know, I think yeah. that's really awesome. Um, what websites and resources do you use? I know you mentioned Vogue.com Eco. Is there any other interesting ones to keep yourself up to date with? Uh, I don't know where you yeah. are. Or do you yeah. have people like on Instagram? Is it, is that, I get a lot of my information from Instagram from my friends who are interested in it and I like, uh, connect through that. Yeah, that's, that's probably, I would say the, where I get the most of my information too. But, um, there is one, um, writer, Alden Wicker is her name and she it was, she's a journalist and she, I think does like such an incredible job of really digging up facts mm -hmm. and doesn't and she's not afraid to have like controversial opinions you know so she like dug into this whole thing about like what is actually more sustainable and ethical in like real versus fake fur you know and like yeah. she's just not afraid to like talk about stuff yeah like and so I really really appreciate that and I like reading her stuff um and then EcoAge is another great company that is always always doing really cool stuff. And then um, Package Free Shop. Yeah. I'm they're great, that. too. They're so, putting great information out there from new products. Yeah. 
Um, oh, and um, my friend, um, my friend Brett Bergmeister has a really great site. You know Brett. Um, her On Duty Citizen website has a lot of great resources for yeah, stuff. So. I look at that a lot too. Um, yeah. And talking about brands or products, is there any brand or a product that you've come across recently um, that you really love, that you like couldn't live without, or you love what they do in their ethical side? So I have written about these guys on my blog. I'm really obsessed with them because I really think that they do a great job of that like quality first thing. Um, it's called Prosperity Candle. And they actually made our wedding candles and like, I mean, they just make the most beautiful candles and they smell so good and there's so, so much thought put into them and they employ refugee women. Okay. Um, so, you know, they even like, you know, they'll send you like a, a box of matches that have like beautiful quotes on them. Like every detail is so well thought out. I just, I love them for that. That's awesome. I love that. And any cool places you like to shop? Is it vintage stores mainly or is there any like cool little fashion things? That so, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because I, I feel like, um, all of this is making me, all of this that we're in right now is just like making me think a little bit differently. And I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say just don't shop <laughs> because okay. it's like, that's what we need. To, we need to support our, and we have to do, I know, I know. But, um, but I do think the, I know the most sustainable thing you can do is buy secondhand. Yes. You know, and I mean, it's not always easy if you're not in a place like New York where there's vintage shops everywhere, but I love ThreadUp. Okay. Um, they're a really great website and they just, not too recently, a little while ago, started including like high-end brands too. It used to be kind of just like Navy and stuff like that, but they really started including high-end brands. Yeah. And then the Real Real is amazing as well. Yeah. Um, there's a great girl on Instagram called the Vintage Riot, I believe, okay. and she has some really cool stuff. So, I mean, I think vintage is, yeah, definitely yeah. the way to go. And there's so many amazing options now. And luckily, I love how it's become a trend. So people love to talk about it more and love to say this is vintage instead of it being like, uh, yeah, you know, it's secondhand. I love that. I think that's awesome. Making trends good um yeah it was going to be some one of my last questions was going to be what's like a favorite new thing you've discovered since being in lockdown is there like a website or something fun you've been doing or it could be anything something you've discovered since lockdown it could be about yourself two things okay well a couple things but i started trying to play ukulele <laughs> okay. love it which is pretty fun and it's actually a little bit easier than I expected if you know like three chords you can play like a hundred songs um and then the other thing which this actually really goes in line with sustainability I have always had like a really bad relationship with cooking and I have ordered food in once yeah this whole month and I have been so proud of myself because I literally took everything out of my cabinets and put it all out on my on my kitchen counter and I'm just like I'm gonna learn this like I'm going to learn how to use what I have and make food <laughs> so I mean in the end yeah. it's much more sustainable I, I think all of us have actually discovered that and how much we can do and how much we relied and wasted money on yes. especially in a city like New York it's definitely something you get used to Absolutely. thank you Heidi it was so lovely yeah. to chat to you and you have an amazing insight um tell us where people can find you what's your blog website um, so my website is spaceforanything.com and um, there's also some resources for models on there um, just if they need support or like somebody to talk to and then my Instagram, Twitter and all that stuff is Heidi K. Morris. Um, so yeah, that's me. Also, I just have to say I can't wait to get my Hunu cup. I'm very excited oh, about it. Can't wait, to see <laughs> can't wait to get them out there. Yeah. So Yay. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye. Be safe. <laughs>